Welcome to another basic component tutorial. Today we will take a look over the triax. I've used these components in a previous project to control the power applied to high voltage loads such as AC heaters or light bulbs. Today we will see how this component works, when to use it and why. I will try to show you a few examples as well using the BTA16 triax and control power. Also make sure that to check the other projects with triax and also see how to control it using Bluetooth and how to implement the PID temperature control for AC voltages using Triax. Links are below in the description. But before we start, make sure you hit the subscribe button, but also the notification bell, otherwise you might miss some of my videos. Also, a big thank you to all my patrons. So, let's get started. Project sponsored by GLC PCB. You could order 10 high quality PCBs for only $2. You can select the board thickness, the color of your solder mask, gold plated pads for better connections and the process is very fast so you would receive the boards in a couple of days. I use their services for all of my PCBs and I always get good results and more professional projects. Upload the Gerbers to GLC PCB and order the boards for very low prices. What's up my friends, welcome back. Let's start with a diode, which is a better no component. If I connect this to a load and apply voltage, you will see that it gives pass to current in one way and block the current flow in the other way. But now if I do this for AC signal, look what happens. I can see the original sine wave and the rectified one and as expected, the diode will block the reverse polarity part of the wave and will give pass to the positive part of the wave. Now imagine that you could switch this diode on and off and control the current flow however you want. A normal diode won't be able to do that, but there is a component that could and it's called a thyristor. A thyristor is basically a control and improved diode. Give it a small pulse at the gate and it will allow pass of the current in one way, till the current changes its direction. As you can see I have a thyristor and an LED as a load and this is very good with DC voltages because the polarity won't change. Each time I enable the gate, it will turn on and stay turned on till the voltage is reversed or the current value is below of the latching current. If I use a smaller LED that won't draw the required amount of current, the LED won't stay turned on. But if I put one more LED, so more current, it will stay turned on. So imagine that we want to control the power to our load using this thyristor. All we have to do is to turn it on and off very fast and by that we can regulate the output. Turn it on is very easy, but to turn it off we need to cut out the current between the anode and the cathode and for that we could use a MOSFET before the thyristor for example, but this doesn't make any sense. But that is for DC voltages. For AC voltage this is different, because the current flow will be stopped automatically when the wave changes its polarity, for example with a sinusoidal wave. We activate the thyristor on the positive side of the wave and when we reach the zero cross, which is the point where the signal gets from positive to negative or vice versa, the current will change its polarity and the thyristor will turn off automatically. So in this case all we have to do is to apply a firing pulse at the gate of the thyristor only on the positive side of the wave and by that we could control the power. But this is just half of the sinusoidal wave. What about if you want to control both of the positive side and the negative side? where this is where you will use the triax, which are basically two thyristors connected one opposed to the other one and sharing the same gate. One will control the positive current and the other one the negative current and by applying pulses at the gate we can control the power. Ok guys, so as a recap, we have a diode which is a PN junction. Then we have the thyristor which is a PN-PN connection. And now we have the triac which is a PN-PN and an NPNP connection. So let's see how the triac works with AC signals. For that I will use a sinusoidal wave once again because it will go to both positive and negative sides. We have the triac connected to a load like this and we will apply a pulse to its gate. On one side we have the input signal and on the other one we have the output. Right now the input is oscillating but the output is still zero because no firing pulse was applied to the triac gate. In the middle of the positive wave I now apply a very short pulse and now as you can see the output is high but not forever. When we get to the zero cross point it will turn off because the activated thyristor won't allow the current pass in that direction anymore. 
but now I apply a pulse once again. And the reverse thyristor will now allow the pass of the current, so the negative part of the wave is now high. So basically, we activate the positive part, then it will stay on till the zero cross, we activate now the negative side of the wave and this will stay on till the zero cross, and then we repeat this once again. Ok, so now we know the basic but how we control the power. For that we have the firing angle, which is basically the time between the zero cross and when we fire the activation pulse at the triac gate. So here is an example. If I send the pulse right after the zero cross, the entire positive wave will pass, and that means a 100% power. But if I send the pulse in the middle of the wave, only half of the signal will pass. So this is 50% power. So by varying the time between the zero cross and the firing pulse, we can control the power. That's exactly what I've done in the past tutorials where we had to read the zero cross of 220 volts AC voltage and control the power for an AC heater or a 220 volts light bulb and we were able to control the power. For that let's see another example. I use the Arduino to detect the zero cross and apply the firing pulses. I first use a full bridge rectifier to rectify the signal and then I pass that to a photocoupler that has a pull up to 5 volts. In this way we separate the high AC voltage from the low DC voltage of the Arduino. So I read this signal with the digital input and by that we can detect the zero cross. Then we apply a firing pulse to another optocoupler that is connected to the triac gate and by that once again we separate the high voltage from the low voltage. I use a potentiometer to change the time between the zero cross and the firing pulse. So download the code from below and upload it to the Arduino. And now as you can see, by changing the time between the firing poles, we can change the output power. On the oscilloscope you can now see that the wave that is allowed to pass is getting bigger or smaller, depending on the delay of the firing poles, which is the green line. So that's how the thyristor and triax work. You have more details below, and also check the datasheets of each component in order to see the current limits, the off times and so on. Also check electronoops.com for the schematic and the code. And please read the comments in the code in order to understand more about timing the firing pulse. Be very careful if you work with high voltage, because this can be lethal. So guys, I hope that you enjoyed this video and that you have learned something new. If so, consider subscribing. And please make sure you activate the notification bell, because till now only 23% of my subscribers are watching my videos. Also, consider supporting my work on Patreon. So thanks again and see you later guys.